Hello and welcome to this week's Rat Strong Coaching Lab. And this is your host, uh, Dr. Kalstu Pradkar. And this one is, is very, very important. And a lot of people are now talking about heart rate based training. So we're going to go through uh, the importance of heart rate based training. What is the best way you can achieve heart rate based training? Um, and what are some of the factors that can uh, contribute to your heart rate based training? Uh, so to start with, uh, runners, cyclists, swimmers, we've all heard, you know, what zone are you in? Or what was your max heart rate? What are we talking about here? It's basically very, very simple. Um, how hard is your heart beating uh, to keep up uh, the flow of good oxygen to the muscles? So as your intensity in a workout increases, your heart's gonna beat higher and higher. And that's the number, you know, it's also called beats per minute, BPM. That's the number we are looking at, or HR. Again, beats per minute and HR are one and the same. Please do not confuse BPM, beats per minute to blood pressure. I've had, uh, I've had people ask me if they are the same and it's not at all. Uh, when we look at heart rate, um, there's a lot of different formulas. The classic formula, uh, which I grew up, uh, especially as a, as a graduate student at uh, University of Wisconsin, uh, was the 220 minus age. And then came the Carvonen method, uh, which the American College of Sports Medicine uh, highly prescribed at that time, which was to take 220 minus your age, and then you take your resting heart rate and apply a formula around it. There's the Tanaka method, which is one of the most acceptable methods. Uh, there's obviously math based training methods. The simplest thing uh, I tell people is if you have uh, a smartwatch or especially Garmin users, just go into your Garmin Connect, enter your proper uh, date of birth and make sure your profile uh, is accurate, your height, your weight, gender, everything. It's going to give you a total value. So uh, it's going to give you multiple options to calculate your heart rate. Uh, just choose the simplest and you're all set. Understand this is just uh, a framework for you to follow. If you want uh, a full-blown, uh, you know, guaranteed somewhat heart rate number, you either have to do a maximal test, either uh, go into a lab and do a VO2 max test, or there's a couple of field tests you can do just Google field uh, text for maximal heart rate. Uh, there's multiple ones for the run and for the bike. Uh, I would say choose one and then stick to it. Uh, what is the benefit of heart rate training? Uh, you're training your aerobic system uh, to adapt. Uh, heart rate training, uh, if done right, will help you recover faster. Obviously, you'll be running maximal time. So 80% of your runs will be at a low intensity. That means naturally, uh, you'll recover faster, number one. And number two, you're going to have, uh, you know, the, your incidence of getting injured um, or having a health issue uh, with exercise is also going to be low. Now comes the key question. How do I measure my heart rate? Well, if you have a smartwatch, it's going to do it for you. Uh, it's very, very easy. It has an optical sensor. So if you have the smartwatch, um, I'll show you mine. It has a uh, the optical sensors, the green green things happening here, uh, that's the optical sensor. And that's the number one mistake I see athletes make, uh, which is that their smartwatch is not tight enough on the wrist. And we'll, we'll talk about that later. When we start discussing heart rate, uh, there's multiple factors you need to consider. Number one, you should have an accurate watch uh, that's going to give you a steady reading. Uh, just imagine you're running full scale and now you have to count. Uh, your heart rate on your wrist or uh, on your neck and that's uh, using a jugular vein uh, that's just too much work and it's very easy uh, to miscalculate so you will never get an accurate reading my number one tip here is that invest in a quality heart rate belt uh, that's going to solve a lot of issues for you um, it's a little cumbersome it takes uh, time to get used to both for men and women women especially because your sports bra more than likely is going to rub uh, on this belt. But trust me, if you want to do heart rate training or if you want uh, heart rate, true heart rate measures um, for, for your own personal data or for your coach, highly advise wear a belt. 
Um, what are the factors that can influence your heart rate? Now, heart rate is, is very reactive, right? So uh, if I were to check my heart rate right now, uh, I'm about 65, 66. If I were to do a few jumping jacks, jump around, it's gonna react very quickly. Um, during a race, there is gonna be times where your heart rate uh, will react. Um, suddenly, uh, you know, something happens, you drop a gel, uh, there's a great volunteer cheering you, uh, you see your family and friends, your heart rate's gonna spike, again, or reactive. Um, when we look at heart rate, uh, the number one thing I tell people or, or athletes is that take a look at your resting heart rate. And if, for example, your resting heart rate has been 60, and now after waking up, it's about 10 beats higher. So you're in the 70s, that means uh, you are not rested properly. Okay, so that's a, that's a sign of fatigue your heart is showing. There's another factor which can uh, contribute to higher heart rate. Uh, that one is obviously weather. If it's hot or very humid, that's going to increase your heart rate, okay? So make sure uh, you match your intensity uh, in summer or especially in the monsoon when it's going to start getting humid. Uh, caffeine, a lot, of, uh, a lot of athletes like their cup of joe in the morning. So if you have a nice big shot of uh, a cappuccino or black coffee, uh, espresso, americano, uh, give your heart time to settle. Otherwise, it's going to have that jolt um, and again, uh, you're going to see higher than normal reading. Obviously, during the race, uh, you know, uh, there'll be caffeinated products, uh, but that's that's designed to give you that extra boost, uh, especially towards the finish line. Um, stimulants, if you're taking, uh, uh, you know, supplements, uh, nicotine, uh, that again is going to increase your heart rate. So, so take that into consideration as well. Uh, one point is medications, and I'm going to talk about legal medications that uh, some of you may be taking, whether it's beta blockers or thyroid medications, uh, uh, some of your, uh, you know, antihistamine medications all have uh, the chance of increasing your heart rate, causing a little bit of tachycardia. So read, uh, read the, the medications list and obviously uh, know the side effects of your medications. Before you get jumping, uh, it could very well be just a common known side effect. Um, of that antihistamine you have to take to manage uh, either your allergy or your asthma, okay? Um, device interference, and this is a big one. Um, so like I said before, if your heart, uh, you know, your watch, heart rate watch is not snug and tight, if it moves, what's gonna happen? Uh, that sensor, the green sensor is gonna go all over the place. You're not gonna get an accurate reading. If you sweat a lot, uh, if you're hairy, um, especially on the wrist, uh, again, Whatever happens, uh, if it's raining and water seeps in, uh, it's going to cause device interference and it's going to give you a little bit of a wacky read. Now, that's prime reason why I said I recommend a belt. Um, that's going to uh, minimize uh, most of these factors. Uh, it may not take it away completely because obviously, um, if the belt's not on too tight, uh, if the battery is running low, it's going to give you um, again, some false readings, but it will minimize um, those false readings that you will get. Uh, last but not least, uh, if you're not rested and uh, fully recovered, like I said, 10 beats higher when you wake up, um, that's a sign that uh, you probably need to either take the day off or lower your intensity. Uh, overall, I would say, uh, most heart rates are, are put in five zones. Uh, zone one uh, would be where I'm just sitting and chit-chatting right now. Uh, zone two would be when I'm starting to do a little brisk jog, uh, a fast walk um, type of a setup. Uh, zone three is going to be when you start jogging. Um, zone three is usually uh, your aerobic zone where uh, you should be able to have a conversation with the person uh, you know, running or cycling next to you. Zone four, again, we start getting into a little heart rate. Uh, it's your tempo, your threshold, threshold work. And then obviously zone five is where you're going uh, close to your max and you're only able to achieve it um, for a very, very small periods of time. And that should usually come when you're sprinting. Uh, majority of your exercise, like I said, uh, should be done somewhere in that zone two, zone three. Uh, 
one tip I want to give you is that if you do heart rate training, uh, ignore the VO2 max uh, guidelines that come uh, on these watches. A lot of times if you do an easy run, uh, it will say that uh, you know your workout was not effective or something of that. Um, again, do one uh, HIIT, so high intensity workout uh, in a week, that's more than enough to maintain your VO2 max. Um, or keep making additions uh, or gains to your view to max. Uh, again, follow the 80-20 rule. Uh, it has worked great for me. It has worked uh, great for a lot of my athletes. And um, if you have any other questions, just feel free to put it uh, in the discussion below and I'll be happy to answer them over a period of time. Uh, this is all about heart rate. Uh, look forward to our next session together.